Now, when I was a little boy growing up in Fort Erie, I lived in a duplex, upper and a lower. I lived upstairs with my mom and my dad. My best friend in the whole world, another little nine-year-old boy, lived right downstairs with just his mom. Now they did the best they can, just him and his mom. He was a product of a single parent home, very common today. But it wasn't common when I grew up in the 40s and the 50s. Always two parents in the home. They did the best they could. We had all the fun that two little nine-year-old boys could have in the backyard. And we went to a hockey game or to the Boy Scouts. He came with me. And that night, my dad would be his dad. And everything was good and everything was fine. But deep down inside, I wished he'd had his own dad because he missed out on those, you know, those special father and son moments. Well, one day, his dream started to come true. See, his mom met a man. A good man, a hard-working man. They were struggling. They were struggling hard, though, and he came along and kind of, kind of lightened the load. This was a good man, hard-working man, worked at GM. Probably made, I don't know, six or seven dollars an hour. That was big money back then. Kind of old, he made now. They started dating, you know, the inevitable. They became engaged. They got married. I was so happy for my friend because I knew that now he would have his own dad and he would get in on those special moments. But it didn't turn out exactly like that, you see. This guy was a hard-working man. He worked double time, triple time, all the time. Bring home every penny that he could wreak and scrape. And he gave it to that woman. You know what? The power of love was upon him. Now ladies, I don't mean to come down on you. But sometimes you can mistake love and kindness for weakness. And that's what she did. She would go shopping, you know, stand around on a corner with her friends. The next thing you know, she was stepping out on me. That didn't mean a whole lot to me at nine years old. I'm a lot closer to that today. But everything moved along. This poor boy that was working, bringing home the money, he knew something went wrong. Because it seemed to me that when he came home at night, she was always too tired for whatever it is that he wanted to do late at night. I'm a lot more closer to that, too. See, when you live in a new place, the sound travels up. And I could hear what was going on. One day, when this poor boy could have no more, he couldn't handle it. He came home and he sat her down, poured her a glass of wine. He said, honey, when I married you, it was the thrill of my life. I'm thrilled to be married to you. But something has changed, and this is how I feel about it right now. The thrill is gone. The thrill is gone away. Uh -huh. The thrill is gone, baby. The thrill is gone away for good. Now that it's over, I won't leave you like a good man should.